Hey, welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is April the 4th, 2024, about 4.30 in the afternoon, which means it has been a really long time since I've done one of these. And as you know, I do a video for every build day. So it's been a really long time since I've done any work on the airplane. And as you can probably tell, nothing has changed since the last time you saw me, which gosh, was like August or September, I think. Uh, you know that we've all gone through this big fiasco with Vans Aircraft and laser cut parts. Here I have my laser cut part replacement parts. There's not a lot. I will do all the jibber jabber about that once I get into the, uh, the voiceover portion of this video because what I'm really doing today is just getting back into it. I've got plans out in front of me here so I can re-familiarize with myself with where I left off and what needs to be done. The work part of the video is going to be pretty mundane stuff. You've seen me do a million times, which is I'm going to be prepping the top skins for riveting. So scuffing, cleaning, priming, dimpling, that sort of thing. We'll talk about everything that's happened in the world of vans, aircraft, uh, and the voiceover. So thanks for being here. Let's build an airplane. All right, here we go. It has been a really long time since <laughs> since I've done this. Um, and so my workflow is a little wonky, uh, just trying to remember how to run this gear. I apologize for my voice. I've had a little bit of a cold uh, past couple of weeks or so. Um, so basically here, just inventorying the parts that I did have vans replaced that were laser cut. And those are just the laser cut parts that weren't already installed on the airplane. So that should give you some clue as to how I feel about all of this after the conclusion of the the engineering study on the um, the life of these laser cut parts. And I'll put links to those videos. There's a summary video and a two hour long, very detailed video outlining what they learned there. Uh, so those parts for me were um, parts for the flaps and the ailerons, which I haven't gotten to yet. Now I'm just kind of refreshing myself. Um, <laughs> guys. It's, it's been many months and my shop, I can guarantee you, has not looked like this. Um, as you know, I work in the film and television industry and last year, uh, the writer's strike followed by the actor's strike put me out of work for uh, nearly 10 months and I'm only just now starting to work a little bit. I'll be very busy later in the year, but that meant that I emptied out my work trailer and used it for hot shotting. So, um, my entire workshop was just buried with gun safes and shelves and all that other stuff that ordinarily lives in my my big 20-foot trailer so anyways um what i'm going to be doing today is getting the top skins prepped um so uh, scuffing cleaning a little bit you know this is not like cleaning the the parts for the fuel tank so um I'd gotten in that habit from building the fuel tanks, but really um, a light scuff along the rivet lines, clean pretty good with some acetone and then hit it with some self etching primer. That's what I'm doing. Um, it's not really a, um, a big deal to me in the beginning. I did it because it was a new skill to learn, but um, I don't, I haven't taken firm sides on one side or the other in the primer wars. But I decided since I've started it that way, I'll, I'll at least finish the wings with um, with priming the mating surfaces. So that's what I'm working on today. And that's always pretty boring <laughs> kind of work. Um, probably what you see me doing here is after removing the skins that have been hanging on there for months is just making sure that everything is uh, adequately marked so that they can hang in the correct orientation on the proper wing once this all gets done. So uh, back to the the Vans laser cut parts uh, debacle. After the, and I'm not an authority, do your own research, watch um, their videos, read the results of the engineering report. The, but the, the end result is yes, those parts that have um, been laser cut and that do develop cracks when dimpling and riveting have a shorter um, metal fatigue life than parts that don't. However, um, that 
shortened life is still several thousands of hours longer than the normal expected ordinary use life of the aircraft. Um, and so what that means to some of us is that um, if they were to develop any sort of problems, um, they would be they would be able to be found just during the ordinary uh, process of like condition inspections and whatnot. Although vans at some point will probably issue a service bulletin with um, specific um, procedures for inspection in certain parts of the aircraft. But um, I think going back to the video I did in November, at that point, um, before the completion of the big study was done, even at that point, the FAA had issued a notice to DARs that um, they could um, issue airworthiness certificates to aircraft that had parts assembled, um, had been assembled with parts, with laser cut parts that were in that batch. Interestingly, um, when you watch the the results of this of the study, what they found is that um, those those dimples, um, those cracked dimples did develop, um, um, the cracks would propagate over a really, really long period of time. But what was interesting is the cracks on those dimples weren't actually where the cracks were found upon dimpling and riveting. They were on a different, a completely different part, seemingly unrelated. Anyways, uh, what you see me using right there is a little, uh, orbital, orbital sander, orbital sander. Um, if I've got big patches, and in this case, it's the spots where the the uh, wing walk doubler will go, so it's a wide path that will be entirely primed, and so this is just a bit quicker. Um, again, I'm not scuffing these things deeply. I'm not trying to get all the way through the all clad. I'm just trying to get a light scuff on there so that the self-etching primer has a good surface to cling to, but I'm... Um, I want to keep these things um, in their natural state. Um, they are pretty resistant to corrosion with that layer of all clad on there, so you don't want to get rid of it. Anyways, yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, I, I probably waited longer than I needed to to get started working on this again, but like I said, the shop was buried, and um, I was basically in survival mode for the past many months, uh, just trying to keep my head above water without any meaningful employment. Um, and now that the parts have arrived from vans, that means once I get past this stage of attaching the top main skins, I'll go into uh, construction of the flaps and ailerons. And um, I'm pretty excited about getting, <laughs> I had to pull my truck forward. The camera's magnetically attached to the back of my truck and I don't want to get primer all over it. So, yep out here <laughs> i i'll be honest with you i don't know if that respirator really does me much good i was digging through some stuff last year i'm like hey check out this respirator and i realized that that is the respirator that i got in new zealand in 2003 when we were prepping for the last samurai and painting several hundred rubber rifles um enfields and and mausers and whatnot so it's just really a mildly effective um, filter um, that I wear for decoration, I guess. So I feel better about myself. I really should get some new filters for that thing. But, yeah, a, a very nostalgic uh, face mask. Um, <clears throat> today I was thinking I'm not really too crazy about my giant... Um, uh, box that I use there if you recall I that's um, part of what my wing kit came in and then I pulled the wood off the top of it and put down some chicken wire so I had a table for priming but it really is a pain in the ass it's big and awkward and kind of heavy and there are probably better ways to do this but I thought it would be cool if I was you know resourceful Anyways, uh, that's kind of the update. Um, now that we're back into build mode, build mode, uh, more videos will be forthcoming. Uh, once I get to work on my next show, um, they will be sporadic. But for the next few weeks or so, I should be able to make pretty good progress. So I really do appreciate you folks hanging in there. And uh, in my absence, 
um, the kind comments, questions, and the interaction. So we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.